Young Show. Hello. They say one of the most successful ways to live life is, instead of trying to put others in their place, put yourself in their place. Well, it's not a very new idea, but it's a very interesting one, don't you think? Dina tells us our story tonight. It's the little things that make up the average woman's life. Like the time she discovers putting orange rind and pancakes gives them a pickup. Or that a gopher has taken up residence in the backyard. I guess to a man it all seems like so much small talk, not really important. Though he may hear his wife speak, he doesn't always listen to her. But it's the little things that add up to everyday living. And when these little things suddenly stop, well, they leave a great big hole. Changes are always hard to get used to. They upset the routine. Now take the house next door. It had been empty for four or five months. I'll bet almost every day I'd say to Chris, It'd be so nice if somebody would move in there. And he'd say, uh-huh, as he always does when he isn't listening. Chris, there's a moving van. Some people are moving in next door. Well, that's nice, honey. Really? <gasps> yes. Well, at last, we're going to have some neighbors again. I hope there's a boy in the family. Well, I don't see anybody so far. You better go back so and finish your breakfast, honey. You'll be late for school. Well, they're nice, friendly people, so we can go and visit once in a while. Don't you, Chris? I mean, we could uh, play a little uh, bridge or poker or something. Chris, I just put some poison in your coffee. Okay, honey. Thanks. <laughs> you caught a oh, next time, Daddy. I certainly did. <laughs> What's the joke? Never mind, dear. Hurry up, kids. Oh, it's time for you to be off now. Hurry up. Bye-bye, honey. honey. Have a good day. Bye, Pop. Bye, Daddy. Be careful crossing the street. Susie, Bye. And your books. Don't forget your books. And for heaven's sake, don't bang the door when you go out. There's the family. Uh-huh. Seem to have two children, a boy and a girl. The boy looks just about the right age for Donnie, too. She's pretty. She's blonde. Oh. I see some things I say you hear. Oh, well, little guy. I wonder what he does for a living. I wonder. Oh, gee, I'm glad there are going to be people moving in there again. Something wrong about an empty house. It seems such a waste to me. I wish I sold it to him. Well, I wonder who did. And you can't tell all of them, you know. You do very well. Uh-oh, I better get going. I'm going to be late. <laughs> I bet that's just what he said, because he's looking at his watch right now. Well, you're going to have a real big day, real exciting. People moving in. Well, it is exciting. I like people. So do I. Well, that's the best time. i got to go. Yeah, right. Bye, sweetie. Bye. Have a good day. Love you. Mm-hmm. I guess they must be married about 12 or 13 years. I can tell by the way he kisses her. It's that 13-year married kiss, just the way Chris kisses me. Oh, I like her. I like the way she hugs her children, as though she really enjoys them. I wonder if their gas is turned on yet. Maybe she'd like some hot coffee. And maybe the kids would like some milk. I think neighbors should be neighborly. Hello. Hello. Uh, how are you? I'm Mrs. Dr. Sherry. Oh, how are you do? I'm Mrs. Stewart. How are you? Yes. And? Hello, Anne. How are you? Nice to see you. And sure. Hello, George. How are you? I just wanted you to like some coffee. I love it. What's the matter? I squeeze your hand to her. <laughs> well, do you want to come over? Thank you. Okay, tell us you're going to be. What's the matter with you? I've got a boy to steer in myself. Any woman will tell you 
that she likes a window over her kitchen sink. A window with a view, either of a garden, flowers, trees, or life going by. For too many months, I had looked out on an empty house. But now there was a family living there once again, and a family with children. The weeks had gone by, and we were now on first name terms. Her name was Laura, and her husband's name was Al. The children were Anne and George. It was wonderful to watch her playing with them. It made me wonder if I was enjoying my children as much. And when my kids came home, I gave each one of them an extra hug just to make sure they knew I loved them. Wives get used to being taken for granted. But kids don't always understand. Hey! Get out of that cage! Hey! None of that now. That's enough. Off with you. Go on. You two out until it's finished. Not until dinner time. Surprise! And I always knew when it was time to set the table for dinner. Because you could set your clock by Laura. At 5.45 every afternoon, She'd step out of her house, open the garage door, and wait for Al to come home from work. Five days a week, week in and week out, he'd never vary. Laura was always there to greet him. I was sure that as they walked into the house together, they must be saying the things Chris and I always say when he comes home from work. What so many wives and so many husbands in so many cities must say every evening. Hi, dear. Have a good day. Oh, about as usual. You? Mm, about as usual. Where are the kids? In their room. Homework. Any interesting mail? Is the telephone bill interesting? Something smells good. Well, you always say that. Even when it's cabbage. What was it tonight? Cabbage. Oh, corned beef, I hope. With carrots. Oh, I can do that with carrots. Yeah. It's supposed to be good for your eyes or something. I think. Notice anything different? Oh, what'd you do with the first round again? No, it's not the room, silly. It's me. Oh, yeah, sure. You're wearing your hair different. Chris, I've worn my hair this way for 15 years. Honey, I'm hungry. Oh. Okay. For your information, it's a new dress. Oh, sure, sure. Oh, it's very pretty, too. What color is it? Greg? What are we going to eat, dear? Chris, I wish you'd help Donnie with his arithmetic. He's having trouble, and I've forgotten almost everything I know about it. Hmm. This wasn't very much in the first place, anyway. Right after dinner. Right after. Don't argue with your daddy, honey. Hey, are you expecting someone? Oh, maybe it's Laura, dear. She wanted a recipe for my lemon pie. Well, hi, Al. Oh, come Hello. on in. Is Dina here? Sir, we're just finishing dinner. Would you like some coffee? No, thank you. Oh, hi, Al. Come on in. Hello, Dina. Mm. I didn't mean to interrupt anything. Oh, you're not. Sit down. Have some ice cream with us, will you? Uh, no, thanks. Uh, Dina, I was wondering if you'd mind keeping an eye on the kids for a few minutes when you're finished. Of course I wouldn't mind, but where's Laura? Well, that's just it. She went to the market over an hour ago, and... Well, I know she likes to shop, but I'm kind of worried. I thought I'd better oh. take a look at her. Did she drive? Uh -huh. No, no, it's just a couple well, of blocks. Well, don't worry about Laura, for heaven's sake. She could spend all day at that market. <laughs> it's a police car coming into my driveway. Excuse me. What is the matter? Honey, I think I'd better see what this is all about. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Wow, a real police car. The policeman's talking to Mr. Lovett. I see, honey, I see. What happened? Wow, look at that black and white police car. I don't know, car. dear. Are we going to get arrested? Oh, of course not, Donna. Be quiet, honey. You jabber wow. how much. Look at that police car. Oh, Mr. Lovett. I don't know. Look at his father, maybe he is. Now finish your ice cream. What is it? What's the matter? It's Laura. But well, what about Laura? A hit-run driver. 
now. Honey, she's dead. It was just two months since Laura had been killed by a speeding car at the corner of Madison and Grand. Down at the Hall of Records, she was just a vital statistic in the past tense. But she wasn't a mere statistic to Al or to her children. Al's sister came to live with him and look after the children. My kids went over a lot to play, and I read to them, baked their favorite cakes, chocolate. But all of us together couldn't take their mother's place. That's a big gap to fill. And every night at 5.45, I'd see Al's car drive in. He'd sit there in the car, hesitating for a moment, almost as though he expected Laura to be there, waiting for him. And then he'd get out of the car and open the garage door for himself. This must have been the toughest moment of his day. He could fill his mornings and afternoons with work. The nights, the nights must have been terribly long. Yeah, I'm home. Oh, hi. So early? Yeah, it was hot and the Hastings didn't show. Oh. Where are the kids? Oh, well, they're out playing. Any interesting mail? Well, there's a letter from Mama. Oh, that's fine. What's for dinner? Chris. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to you. Sure, honey. Far away. Now, please, put the paper down, will you? What's the matter? Well, it's about Al Lubbock next door. You know, his sister told me that she hasn't seen him shed one tear since it happened, but that she knows he doesn't sleep nights either. Yeah, well, I'm sorry for the guy, but what can we do? Well, you know, it's been over two months now. Gee, I think you ought to start trying to take an interest in things again. Well, for the children's sake, as well as his own. Dina, it's still none of our business. Hey, how's got his sister? Yeah, I know. And she's very nice. She does the best she can. But, you know, she's not very lively. Oh, it just seems to me that Al should be around another family once in a while. People who are... Whole and happy. Like us? That's what I had in mind, yeah. No, honey, we've tried. Now, we, we've asked him over for dinner three or four times. I know. Now, you've done everything you could. Honey, the guy just wants to be left alone. Well, maybe it's just that he didn't want to spend the whole evening with us. Maybe we just asked him over for a drink. And then that way we could, well, we could kind of pick things up again where they stopped. For the accident. I don't know. What would we talk about? Oh, honey, just normal things, that's all. Well, if you want to ask him sometime, go ahead. Yeah, well, I, I meant today. Today? Uh-huh. Well, honey, are you sure we aren't just butting in? No, I don't think so. Okay, when he comes home, I'll ask him. No. I'll ask him. And I know just how I'll do it. And when. What do you mean? When his car pulls in that driveway at 545, I'll be waiting there for him just where Laura used to wait. Oh, well, do you think that's a good idea? Well, I think that's probably his hardest moment. When he needs help the most. What time is it now? It's a little after 5.30. Well, then I better get going. What are you going to do? Let's change my dress. Wow, you look fine. Oh, no, this is just a house dress. I want to look nice for him. 
Maybe it'll cheer him up a little bit. Why should you go to all the bother? Oh, people should bother once in a while. It would make life a lot easier. Honey, I'm putting on my flower print with a blue belt. What do you think? Chris, did you hear me? Anything you say, honey, you're running the show. What time is it now? Oh, you better hurry. It's 5.37. Well, I'm almost ready. Do I look all right? Well, you look wonderful. Well, here it goes. Good luck. Yeah. Right over. I'll fix some drinks for us. Yeah, I'll do that. Hi, Al. How are you? Come on in. Good to see you. S sit down. Dean is fixing us a drink. Dina just wouldn't take no for an answer. <laughs> she never does. Well, I'd better see if I can hurry her along. Excuse me? Uh, here we are. If it's not strong enough, just let out a yell. He's not a very good bartender. Thanks. Nothing like a long, cool drink on a hot day. Helps me to forget all the real estate I should have sold and didn't. <laughs> Thank you. Al? I, uh, I suppose you must be waiting for her all the time. Waiting for her? Yes. Well, you know, like... Expecting to bump into her right around the corner or having her walk in from another room. You must think about her all the time. Don't you? No, I, I don't think about her. I don't think about it. Dina. There are other things we can talk about. Are there? Al. I should think trying not to remember would be a, a constant reminder. Isn't it? Here. I'm really a very good bartender. Sure, why not? It isn't champagne, but why not? Here's a toast. Here's a toast to the most beautiful, the most wonderful, the most... the most... Oh, Al. Oh, Al, you're I know. I know you feel sorry for me. Al, open it up. Oh, don't. Don't be a hypocrite, Chris. Wait, I'll get it. I, I, don't, I don't get it. Of course you don't get it. It's because you don't know what it's like. I am sorry. I, no, I'd do anything. No, 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 Chris. You're not sorry, you're glad. 
That's why everyone tries to be so kind to me. Because they're glad that it happened to me instead of them. They're glad that it happened to Laura instead of Dina. They're glad that it's not you who gets into the empty bed. They're glad that it's not you and anything else is a lie. I know you wouldn't, even if you could, give me back my wife in exchange for yours. But I'll tell you what you can do. I'll tell you what you can do if you really feel sorry for me. If you really want to help. You can all do it. All my grieving, sympathetic friends can do it. It's the easiest, and it's the best, the only thing that is left that you can do for me. Laura. I love you, Laura. Treasure your own happiness together. It's the only good thing, the only real thing that ever happens to any of us. But when it does, and we've got it, we let it go. And when it's lost, we're different. You hardly notice her, Chris. You, you, you don't even know what she looks like. It may happen to you someday. You go on hating yourself for all the times that you could have kissed her and you didn't. So if you really feel sorry for me, I mean really feel sorry for me, love her. Love her now while you've got the chance. Take a look at her. Take a good, long look, my friend, because it may be one of the few you'll ever have. Here's Miss Young. Thank you, John. Every man's neighbor is his looking glass. Oh, good night. And we'll see you next week? Be with us again next week. Same time, same station. Yeah.